Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here with Kelby One, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about Particle Shop. Now, Particle Shop is the plugin just recently released by the makers of Painter and allows you to do some really cool brush effects right here inside Photoshop through the plugin, which is bringing the very best part of Painter, which is the brush engine, and uh, being able to add it to your Photoshop workflow. It's like you can do some really, really cool effects with this. It's a really a lot of fun to play around with and very easy to use. Now, what I want to talk about specifically in this video is they just recently released an update to the plugin which allows you to apply the effect to a blank layer. Now, I just want to talk about the workflow with that because a, I want to show you a couple of different scenarios you can use when creating these certain brush effects. Now, I want to show you right, uh, right away. Now, I've got an image here where I've already got the subject extracted on, and she's on a black background here, which is on a separate layer. Now, I want to do a couple of different brush effects using Particle Shop, but I want to show you two different scenarios for applying these to a blank layer. Now. I like to be able to put as much as my effects as I can on blank layers in the event I want to adjust them or even if I want to erase them all together and not have to start all over again. Now, let's go ahead and create a new blank layer above my background layer here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go to Filter and go to Painter and launch Particle Shop. Now what you're going to see right away is a little warning that basically says we recommend you create a copy of the selected layer, object, or image before you paint in Particle Shop. Do you want to return to your application and create a new copy? Now ordinarily you probably want to go ahead and just return to application, make a duplicate so you're doing this non-destructively, and then, uh, then launch pa uh, Painter again. Now I'm going to go ahead and just say launch Particle Shop and it's going to go ahead and bring me into my Particle Shop interface. And, and I wanted to show you this because if you if you notice we've got the transparent background that we saw that we um, started with inside of Photoshop. Now ordinarily this would probably be okay depending on another plugin. However, if I go and grab a brush here and I'm in the starter pack of brushes here, and I'm just going to grab one and just start painting in it. And I can see the brush effect on my transparent background, but it's really hard to tell what it looks like. Furthermore, it's hard to tell how it's going to look in relation to the subject I'm painting on. So that's really not going to work. That makes it a little bit more difficult. So let's cancel out of that and go back into there. Now, I am going to go ahead and make a duplicate of the background layer. Like I said, I want to do a background a brush effect, and then I want to do effect, an effect on the subject herself, um, kind of have a, a light streak kind of going around her. So um, first off, I'm going to make a duplicate of that background layer, go to Filter, and let's go ahead and launch Particle Shop again. And it's again, again, it's going to give me that warning. Now, of course, if you're going to be using this a lot, you can go ahead and check do not show this message again if you, uh, once you know that you need to do this um, in order to apply this effect, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. Uh, so we're going to launch Particle Shop. And now I'm just going to go ahead and get, uh, I want to use this fabric brush here. And let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit more. And let's actually make this a different color. Let's go with kind of a light blue color. And I'm going to go ahead and activate Glow there, and there we're getting that. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring the brush opacity down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm using the fabric brush, which is part of the starter pack here. And I've adjusted the color and adjusted the opacity of the brush and everything like that. But now I'm just going to go ahead and just randomize painting my background effect here for my subject. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a few little streaks there. I'm going to go ahead and click Save here down in the bottom right corner. And I'm also going to get another warning here. Now I'm getting two options here. I can either merge the brush strokes with the source content, which is the original background, or I can save only the brush strokes. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave Save Only the Brush Strokes. And what's going to happen is it's going to return back to Photoshop, but it's going to eliminate the original background layer, leaving only the brush strokes remaining on a separate blank layer, as you can see right there. So now I have my effect on its own layer. I can reposition it, adjust it, even throw a layer mask on it if I wanted to uh, get some masking effect going on here and just do something like that. Pretty cool. All right. Now I want to apply my effect to my subject. So I'm actually going to turn off this uh, brush stroke layer for the moment. And what I'm going to do is with the top layer selected here, I'm going to go to the pop out menu here and I'm holding down the option key as I do this. I'm going to go down and choose merge visible. And what that's going to do is create a merged copy of all the visible layers into a new layer because I want to put my brush effect around her, but you'll notice she's extracted in the original layer here. And if I bring it into Particle Shop, I'll see her, but I'll just see that transparent background. And then as you saw a moment ago, it makes it difficult to see the effect 
when you're um, on a transparent background like that. This is why I went ahead and merged all these effects into a single layer here. So now I'm gonna go to Filter, go to Painter and do Particle Shop again. And it's not gonna give me that warning because I went ahead and told it not to worry about telling me that. And uh, now we're in our original image here. Now, let's go and get a different brush. I'm actually gonna get this uh, smoke brush here, which I actually like the effect it gives me there. But I am gonna do a different color here. Let's do something more like this. There we go. And make sure the brush opacity and the size are good. Okay. And so, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of make this effect kind of dance around the subject here just a little bit. Don't go too crazy with it. I think that will look pretty good there. And then I'm just going to go again, like before, click save. It's going to ask me once again, um, do I want to merge the strokes with the source content or save only the brush strokes? Again, we're going to save just the brush strokes, click OK. And now that merged layer is now just the layer with my brush effect applied to it. So now I can go over here and add a layer mask to the layer. And let's go ahead and get a brush and let's kind of brush away the elements where I want to see my subject. And it's going to give me the effect of these kind of light streaks dancing around my subject, not just behind her or in front of her, but it's kind of going around her. And that looks pretty cool there. So if I turn on my other brushstroke layer there, you can see I've got all kinds of really cool effects going on uh, around my subjects here. And again, like I like I really like having these effects on their own layer so I can man uh, manipulate them, maneuver them around, and nothing's really getting in my way and all that stuff. Looks pretty good. Now, here's one more little tip. Let's say I wanted that uh, these kind of pink strokes to really kind of generate light in a sense. So you could do that by duplicating the layer and maybe changing the blend mode. You're gonna get a little bit brighter effect depending on the blend mode you choose. I do, you know, color dodge looks pretty good. And what I want to do is almost have it look like that the the pink streaks are kind of generating a light and reflecting on my subject. So here I'm going to create a new blank layer above, directly above the subject. And let's go ahead and get my eyedropper tool here and let's just sample that kind of pink color there. And I'm going to clip this layer with the layer below, which is the subject layer, just by simply going into the pop-up menu here and choosing Create Clipping Mask. Now, whatever I put on this layer will only be visible on the subject itself. So if I go ahead and get my gradient tool, and we'll do a radial gradient, uh, foreground to transparent, and let's just do a gradient on the side right here. Now, it's not blending right, the, the effect is there, but we need to change the blend mode to something like soft light, and that's gonna give me that kind of glow on it. Now, if I go around the subject and just certain parts and add a little bit of a glow there, it's gonna sell the effect of that, those streaks giving off light a little bit better. If I just go ahead and paint some elements here, and do a little bit there, and there we go. A little bit crazy going on up in the uh, area of the hair up here. So let's go ahead and select layer mask on these layers up here and let's just paint those elements away there. Just kind of lessen that effect. There we go. But now I have a tremendous amount of control because I'm able to apply these effects to a blank layer. But remember, you want to be able to see your subject when you're applying these effects. And that's why it's important to create a merged copy or a duplicate layer altogether and then apply the effect to it and then return it back to Photoshop with the effect on a blank layer. It's really easy to do, but just want to make sure you understood how that goes. I wanted to show you a couple of different scenarios there. But again, you've got all the powerful brush elements of Particle Shop, and now you can really implement them into your workflow in a much easier way. And you can certainly find out more by going to painterartist.com slash Kelby1. Here's where you can find out more information about the plugin. You can even purchase it right here online. And as you scroll down, you can get a lot more information like tech specs and even learn more about brush packs and even the brushes themselves, themselves in detail. And as you scroll down further, you can actually get a little bit more information on the individual brush packs and purchase them right there. So be sure to check that out. And that's at painterartist.com slash Kelby1.